Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. One person dead after a crash on the city's north side. We have the details coming up. Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson gearing up for a final day of confirmation hearings. I'm Alex Roche in Washington. I'll have a preview coming up. All right, I walked outside this morning. It was a bit chilly, 48 degrees starting off today on the cool side. What will things shape up to be? Mike will let us know in just a bit. Good morning, Wednesday, March 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. All right, so the line of demarcation from fine to cold, 50 degrees, right? Mm, see, mine's more like 60. 60? So Sometimes you're saying 65. 59, you're throwing on the jacket. Oh, yeah, 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 of course. I mean, I wear the jacket when it's like 70 degrees inside. All right, Mike, are we going to be about away from jacket weather, <laughs> Sarah's jacket weather? Well, for some people, uh, you get in the shade later on today, will only be in the low 70s. So even yesterday, it was kind of kind of coolish out there in the afternoon. So today will be, will be cool. It is chilly this morning. So yes, definitely be like Sarah. Grab a jacket this morning. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now. 49 in town, now down to 39 Comfort, 38 in Kerrville, and we've got some really, really dry air. So that's, uh, again, dry air does not hold the heat in and then heats up very quickly. So this is allowing, and with the clear skies right now, allowing temperatures to drop down. There's a bit of a breeze out there. Uh, no wind to speak of out there in Kerrville and Comfort. So when you don't have the wind, that the colder, heavier air settles down to the surface. But it will still continue to drop down over the course of the next couple of hours. Now, with that breeze, temperatures in the 40s, we do have a wind chill right now. Feels like 45 out there at the airport, 42 in Balverde and Rio Medina at 41, even down to 37 in New Braunfels. So dry air and the wind's going to be picking up later on today. Yep, fire weather watch has already been issued, goes into effect at 11 o'clock up until 7 o'clock for uh, pretty much almost all of the area with the exception of some of our eastern counties does include San Antonio going up 281 all the way out to the west and all the way down to the south. An extremely high fire danger today and that's going to remain the case. I think even tomorrow I there's nothing formally posted yet, but I wouldn't be surprised if a fire weather watch is posted for tomorrow as well, because it's still going to be dry, it's still going to be breezy tomorrow. Uh, right now, Oak is on the moderate side. Juniper, Ash, and Hackberry all low. The updated count is going to come out in a, a few hours, right after 7 o'clock. So this morning, I think we uh, end up dropping down to 40 degrees here in town, so definitely chilly. A couple of clouds out there, and then we will see more clouds today. We'll call it partly sunny skies, and it is going to be windy with a high temperature of 71. Get ready because spring is right around the corner. We are definitely going to be warming up. Big question, when does the humidity return and any more rain down the road? Details in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, San Antonio police tell us one person dead after a rollover crash on the city's north side. So take a look. This happened just after 10 p.m. Ooh, at the intersection of Bassey and McCullough Avenue. Now, police on the scene telling us a vehicle was headed on Bassey. The driver crashed, and the crash caused a rollover. The rollover hit a man who was riding his bike. Now, police say that man on the bike was killed. As for the driver and the child in the vehicle, they were taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Police tell us speed may have played a factor in the crash, but right now we are still waiting to learn the name of that person on the bike and what charges, if any, the driver will face. It's a 20 year prison sentence for a woman who killed her nephew in a DWI crash. 39 year old Rebecca De Leon pleaded guilty of intoxicated manslaughter. The crash happened back in September of 2020 on Warsbach Road. And according to Bear County District Attorney's Office, De Leon was driving when she crossed several lanes of traffic, hitting someone on the sidewalk. That person was her nephew, Carlos Cifuentes, who later died from his injuries. De Leon's blood alcohol level was 0.216. That's nearly three times the legal limit. In your morning headlines, at least one person dead after a tornado ripped through parts of New Orleans and its suburbs last night. It flipped cars and even ripped roofs off of homes. So take a look. This is parts of St. Bernard Parish. It borders New Orleans to the southeast, and it looks like it took the brunt of the storm. Rescue workers continuing the search through the area for more people who need help. Uh, damage comes after other tornadoes spawned by the same storm system hit parts of Texas and Oklahoma, killing at least one person, causing multiple injuries and obviously widespread damage. President Biden is set to meet with key allies in Brussels and Warsaw this week as the leaders try to prevent Russia's war on Ukraine from getting worse. Biden heads to Europe today on a four day trip that will test his ability to navigate the continent's worst crisis since World War II. 
There are fears that Russia could use chemical or nuclear weapons as its invasion becomes bogged down in the face of logistical problems and fierce Ukrainian resistance. Overnight, Ukrainian authorities say their troops reclaimed an important suburb of Kyiv and control of a key highway, allowing them to block Russian troops from surrounding the capital. And a judge ruling that Alex Jones has to appear for a deposition today. Remember, this is in a defamation lawsuit against him, and it's related to what he said about that Sandy Hook shooting. So a lawyer for the InfoWars founder said that Alex Jones couldn't be deposed because he had an undisclosed medical condition and that Alex Jones needed to remain home under a doctor's supervision. But during a hearing yesterday, an attorney for the plaintiff said Jones allegedly appeared to be broadcasting live from the studio. A Jones lawyer could not confirm whether that were true. Now, Sandy Hook families have been pushing for this deposition since they sued Alex Jones for defamation back in 2018. He's going to be questioned about whether he knew the shooting that killed 20 children and six adults was real when he repeatedly suggested on his show that it was a hoax. Well, Supreme Court nominee Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, she returns to the Senate today for a final day of questioning. ABC's Alex Perche is the latest from Washington. This morning, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson preparing for a final day in the hot seat, defending her record to Republicans who claim she's soft on crime. As someone who has had family members on patrol and in the line of fire, I care deeply about public <clears throat> safety. Judge Jackson also responded directly to misleading accusations that she's let child porn offenders off the hook. Nothing could be further from the truth. Republican Mitt Romney telling the Washington Post the attacks on Judge Jackson's sentencing record are off course. His colleagues also asking a wide range of probing questions, accusing her of calling former President George W. Bush a war criminal during her time as a public defender. So to be clear, there was no time where you'd called President Bush or Secretary Rumsfeld a, quote, war criminal, close quote. Did you want Correct, to respond? Senator. And on abortion rights, she said this. Roe and Casey are the settled law of the Supreme Court. And Senator Ted Cruz questioning the judge on the political issue of critical race theory. It views every conflict as, as a racial conflict. Um, do you think that's an accurate way of viewing society? Senator, I don't think so, um, but I've never studied critical race theory and I've never used it. Cruz then asking Jackson about one children's book after another. The judge exasperated. Senator, I have not reviewed any of those books, any of those ideas. They don't come up in my work as a judge, which I'm respectfully here to address. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who is on the Judiciary Committee, says that he believes Judge Jackson is weathering these hearings extremely well. But still, these might just be a formality because Democrats don't need any Republican votes to push Judge Jackson through. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Time now, 438, 47 degrees out. Go Spurs, go! Oh my goodness, here we go. After that last second win by Kelvin Johnson against the Warriors, Spurs looking to improve their standings in the Western Conference. And they can still make the play-in tournament, so they're going to take on Portland tonight, the team right above them. Let's take a look outside with the roads at 438 this morning. 281 in bidders, things looking pretty clear out there. 35 in Martin, looking like no situations there and 281 at the quarry. Now I did see this. There's an 18 wheeler blocking off this access from loop 410. It's been there for quite some time. Hopefully Stephen Cavazos or Jonathan Colton will give us an update on that situation later in the morning. Absolutely. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 47 degrees now. What can we expect for the rest of the day? We'll be joined by Mike Osterhage in just a bit. Go Spurs, go. Our San Antonio Spurs in Portland are taking on the Trailblazers tonight, and it gives them a chance to put some distance between them and Portland in the Western Conference standing. So the team always wanting to make up some ground against the Pelicans, who have dropped to the 10th and final position in the West. So the Spurs open up their four-game road trip with a win against the Warriors Sunday, 110-108, to and it came down to an exhilarating last-second shot. Keldon Johnson off a missed free throw by Jacopoto to win the game. New guy, Josh Richards and Alyssa Jacopoto at the line. Uh, you know, we're going to take a second. Rewatch it. Three, two, 
That's the win, Sarah Costa. But anyway, nice. new spur Josh Richardson gave us a version of him being waved off of DeJounte Murray, crashed the board in case of a miss. Now, following the rare road practice in San Francisco on Monday, DeJounte gave us his version of overruling Josh's plans. He's like, DJ, get back, I'm going to crash. And I was like, no, you get back, I'm going to crash. I mean, obviously, I didn't know the ball was going to, you know, come right there. Uh, didn't even know Yako was going to miss it. I believe he was going to make it, first of all. But he missed it and it happened to, you know, I win. And, just try to get my ball, my hand on the ball and hit it or grab it, whatever. And it came in our favor. All right, so here you go. Tip off tonight, 9 o'clock, Spurs, Blazers, and you got a spot in the playoff on the line. Here we go. It is never too early to talk football. So after enjoying a spring break, the UTSA Roadrunners returning to spring workouts on campus, knowing the expectations of this team, they're now higher than before. Well, that's after they scored the most wins in school history. 12 wins last season. They brought home the Conference USA Trophy for the first time. Now with the potential move to the AAC, the American Athletic Conference, one of the biggest voids the Roadrunners have to fill is left tackle. Remember, Spencer Buford decided to turn pro. So one of those competing for the spot, Ernesto Almaraz. We're still working out some tweaks at left tackle. Brand new position and... Uh, you know, I'm excited to bring a, a new aspect to the team. You know, it's not fair to ask anybody to go in there and just to be Spencer from day one. We, we've all got to be better, you know, from, from every one of us, from the head coach to the play caller to the other guys back. All of us have got to be a little bit better to, to help that spot. That's a tough spot to go in there and play instantly. All right, here we go. UTSA Roadrunners Fiesta Spring Game held April 14th, 7 p.m. at Dub Ferris Stadium. There you go, your guy. I know. Cooking with fish grease? Hotter than fish hotter grease. Than hotter, hotter than grease. Hotter than fish, fish grease. grease. Let's say it real fast. There we go. <laughs> Time now, 444, 47 degrees out. Up next, first look at how a Dancing with the Stars pro is returning home to help people affected by the war in Ukraine. A Dancing with the Stars pros return to Poland to aid Ukrainian refugees. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, an ABC News exclusive, Max Chmerkowski back in Poland. Why would you go close to the conflict zone again now that you were able to get out? What motivated you? Last month, Max was stuck in Ukraine as Russia began to strike, eventually escaping on a train, but he was determined to go back and help, setting up housing for refugees. Uh, and we're creating communal spaces. He and his family are organizing shipments of supplies to Ukraine and Poland. Bullet. What was it about seeing your family that then made you realize that you had to go back to help these other families? I feel like this is my duty. I'm here to remind people that this is just getting worse. And we'll have much more of our exclusive interview with Max Chmerkowski from Poland, plus full live coverage of the conflict in Ukraine coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. All right, let's take a look outside with Traffic Authority. I know that, so I saw this situation earlier on my drive in 35 at Bins Engelman. That is an 18 wheeler that they're trying, it's completely turned over on its oh. side. And so crews have been working for several hours trying to get it back upright and on the record. Is that the Kong record there that I'm seeing? Uh, it's hard to tell. Know. Well, that, that situation's been going on for several hours, so hopefully we'll get an update that and we'll keep an eye on that. But that, that flyover right there is closed for the time being as they work on that accident. All right. So we're checking with weather now. Mike Oster, it's a beautiful picture behind you. Yeah, this was uh, in Seguin yesterday as the uh, sun was going down. It was absolutely gorgeous out there. And uh, it's going to be beautiful weather. Now, we will have a few more clouds hanging around here today. Gorgeous weather uh, the rest of the week. It's it kind of chilly this morning, but... But the, the biggest uh, the downside is, of course, the, the fire danger. Right now, we do have mostly clear skies uh, around the area. And yeah, fire weather watch has been issued, goes into effect at 11 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock this evening. We still have extremely low humidity. And of course, you know, you cut the area in half and out to the west when we had the rain and some of the strong storms that was all the way off to the east. Didn't get any rain at all out to the west. And so that's what. what 
on top of the uh, windy conditions why the fire weather watch is in effect throughout the rest of today. We are going to continue to drop down to 40 degrees, mostly clear skies this morning, one or two clouds out there. And then as the morning rolls on, we'll start to see a few more clouds kind of move on into the picture. We'll get up into the uh, mid 50s by mid morning and then 63 degrees at noon. And again, a couple of more clouds out there. I'm the graphic is a mostly cloudy, call it partly sunny. Um, a lot of especially high clouds hanging around here and definitely breezy. Winds are going to be about to 10, 20 miles per hour gusting at times and we'll hit a high temperature later on today, getting up into the uh, low 70s. So it will be about five degrees below normal. Now, as far as the wind, yeah, it's not overly windy right now, but obviously enough to put a wind chill out there. So it feels like 37 in New Braunfels, 42 Rio Medina, as well as Bernie stage. The dew point temperatures measure moisture in the atmosphere have dropped down about 10 15 20 close to 30 degrees compared to this time yesterday so much much drier air and again that is one of the factors be helping with that high fire danger out there and it's only going to remain very dry so as far as the comfortable factor yeah it's going to be really really comfortable out there the next couple of days uh, but again with the dry air and even breezy tomorrow wouldn't be surprised if more uh, fire weather watches at least are going to be issued for tomorrow around the area because again that dry air continues to get pumped on in here. Here's what the uh, satellite picture looks like. A couple of clouds moving on in. Like I said, we'll have more clouds being uh, pulled on in here from the west. Off to the east, this massive, massive storm system producing a lot of snow up there around the Great Lakes. And this is the one that moved through our area a couple of days ago and then also produced deadly tornadoes around New Orleans. Huge tornado moved through there and that's going to continue to work its way uh, off to the east. So on the back side of it, yeah, great weather for us for the next couple of days, starting with today, although we will have a few more clouds around here. 63 degrees, partly cloudy skies. And again, it is going to be somewhat on the, the windy side. 71 for a high temperature today. The normal average is 76. Tomorrow, still another cool morning. Jacket weather, even the rest of the, uh, the work and school week. Breezy again tomorrow. Plenty of sunshine then the rest of the week. 75 tomorrow, back up to normal, and then turn up the heat. Ooh. But the humidity is going to be low throughout the rest of the week. It starts to come back in later on in the weekend, and then we do have a chance of rain maybe by the middle part of next week. A few more clouds hanging around here Monday and Tuesday, but more humidity. I know those storms were devastating for so many parts of the state, but did the rain that we get, did that help with drought conditions at all? Not really. No. Yeah. We got a quarter of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport, mm -hmm. which doesn't really do much. And of course, out to the west where it was needed the most. I mean, everybody needs it, but nothing. Wow. Yeah. All right. Mike Thank Ostridge. You, Mike. 452, 48 degrees out. Well, up next, details in the new horror film. Uma, is that right? Uma, sure. Sure, all right, Uma, it's scaring audiences in theaters. Now let's take a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, six, two, seven, fireball two, daily four, six, nine, nine, three, fireball zero. Cash five, four, nine, 13, 17, 35. Mega millions, eight, 15, 21, 27, 61, mega ball eight, mega plier three. Good morning, welcome back. We have some entertainment news for you. New horror film arriving in theaters and a popular series gets renewed. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I remember so much screaming. The new horror film, Amma, is scaring audiences in theaters, and it's the latest in a series of movies and TV shows from women of Asian descent. Pixar's Turning Red, the upcoming Apple TV Plus series, Pachinko, all deal with Asian themes in their own way, something Amma writer-director Iris K. Shim tells me is amazing. It's really exciting. It's a moment that I've been waiting for all my life. I mean, when I was younger, this, you know, being able to see myself on screen was was impossible. And even when I did see Asian faces, there were mostly Asian movies from Asia. So that experience, those characters were not necessarily some um, characters that I could directly relate to. Amma is in theaters now. Looks like West Side Story star Rachel Zegler might end up at the Oscars after all. The Hollywood Reporter saying the actress has now been invited as a presenter and is trying to rearrange her Snow White shooting schedule in London in order to attend. Many were surprised when Zegler answered a fan comment on Instagram over the weekend saying she hadn't been invited to the show, even though she's the star of one of the Best Picture nominees. Carrie, party of three. 
Good news, Sex and the City fans. The journey continues. The revival series, and just like that, renewed for a second season. HBO Max took its time greenlighting season two. Season one ended almost two months ago. On Instagram, star and executive producer Sarah Jessica Parker shared a class pic and thanked the audience for their support. And happy birthday to Carrie Russell, the American star turning 46 today, while superstar singer Shaka Khan is 69. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. Anything you want to add? Excuse me? Anything you want to add? Nope, I think they got it all. Okay, <laughs> time now, 457, 47 degrees out. All right, still ahead on GMSA, our tornado tears through parts of New Orleans and its suburbs last night, flipping cars and ripping roofs off homes and killing at least one person. We'll have more on where that severe weather is headed next. Plus, Zoom is trying to make online meetings a little more fun with animal avatars. Do you remember the lawyer who was stuck in the cat? Best moment of 2021. <laughs> we have the details coming up in today's Tech Bites. Hey, Stephen Cavazos just walked in. Hopefully he can give us an update at this incident at Loop 410 that you're seeing there with that overturned trailer. He'll let us know when we come back for 5 o'clock. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, another round of severe weather is expected today in other parts of the country, while here at home, parts of Guadalupe County are still picking up the pieces. And here at home, here in Alamo City, taking a live look out there, 47 degrees to start your Wednesday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does the rest of the work week look like? I'm going to check it with Mike in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. March 23rd, we are officially in spring. Woo! I love spring. I thrive in spring. This is your season. It's my season. It's not too hot. You know, we have cool temps in the morning, warm, you know, sunshine. You have flowers that are starting mm. to bloom. The garden is starting to look lush again. Mike, is she a good prognosticator well, for that, today? Well, that's because she's got the green thumb. Yeah. No, oh, it's yeah. just, if you just have to be more aware of the flowers around you. That's all it is. <laughs> you need to embrace the nature. Embrace nature. Speaking of which, coming up a little bit later on, I got a nice picture of some uh, blue bonnets out there. Uh, this morning, though, it uh, it's a little on the chilly side, though, but like Sarah was talking about, the cool mornings were 48 degrees. We're going to continue to drop down, and we've got most of the clear skies right now. A little bit of a breeze, and look at that bottom number. The dew point is down to 29, so still have some very, very dry air uh, hanging around here, and that's going to be the case for the next couple of days. Uh, we'll make it up into the low 70s today. That's it. So we'll still be about five degrees below normal later on today and we'll have more clouds. The aquifer yesterday did drop down half a foot and the allergens oak is moderate. So we're starting to get into the oak season a bit more. Ash, juniper and hackberry are all on the low side. All right, with the uh, little bit of a breeze out there, cool temperatures. Yes, we do have a wind chill right now. So grab a jacket. Feels like 36 in Kerrville, 45 at the airport. 37 is the wind chill right now in New Braunfels. And we we were talking about the very dry air that's prompting fire weather watch to be in effect later on this afternoon goes into effect at 11 o'clock up until seven o'clock. And again, this is pretty much the area that did not see any rain the couple of days ago with those storms that moved on through here. Yeah, we got a quarter of an inch of rain yeah, officially out of the airport, which that's nice, but really didn't help out that much. And the wind is obviously going to be picking up and the situation is not going to get any better the next couple of days because we'll still keep this very dry air in place and a little bit of a wind. A couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Yes, it is chilly. Grab a jacket and partly sunny skies. So we will have a lot of high clouds hanging around here today. Breezy and on the cool side, again, low 70s. I mean, not bone chilling, but below normal sunshine. It's going to start to get warmer as the week rolls on. We're going to make it up into the low to mid 80s and the weekend looks very nice. Sunny. It is going to be warm. However, the humidity is going to start its return as we go into especially the latter part of the weekend and then into next week. Maybe a rain chance but not for about another week. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. I know there's a big problem out there this morning. What's the latest? Yeah, Loop 410 uh, uh, right here at Loop 13 is the spot that we're looking at this morning, Mike. Let's get a closer look from TransGuide because we're starting this Wednesday off with some issues on the roadway. Now, we see these flashing lights, and if you're traveling through here in the next few moments, you may want to start looking for a different route because you see these flashing lights are blocking off that exit there. That is because we do have an 18-wheeler that's been jackknifed. I was talking to our friends over at TransGuide. This happened just before 
1041 this morning, so it has been quite a while that we've been seeing this activity out there. Let's go ahead and take a different look there where we can see where first responders have been out there for quite a while. And as we're looking at from this trans guide camera, it does look like this could be a little while before we see any resolution. So make sure you're planning accordingly this morning. Thankfully, we're not seeing any buildup. Keep in mind, this is right there detected on 410 eastbound at I-35, according to TxDOT. Again, no slowdowns in the eastbound lanes of 410 getting on the I-35, but we're going to watch that area closely. Let's go ahead and push out of the map and show you how things are looking in the metro area at 504. Looks like another crash may have popped up there off of I-35. We'll check that out in just a moment. But right now, if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities, no delays just yet. Pretty green from Seguin, 30 minutes to downtown San Antonio in the westbound lanes. 21 if you're traveling in from 87 and Lavernia in the northbound lanes. And right now, 28 minutes coming in from Floatusville to downtown SA. All right, 35 at Ben Zingelman. We're going to watch this closely and we're going to give you all those updates coming up in the next few moments. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. A man and a woman are dead after a murder suicide on the far west side at an apartment complex off of Petrenko Road. Bear County Sheriff's deputies responding after the man called 911 to say he killed a woman and there was a baby inside of the Esperanza apartment complex. Sheriff Javier Salazar tells us the man let deputies into the apartment where the woman was already dead. He was still holding a large knife and the six to seven month old baby girl was sitting unharmed in a high chair. A deputy took the girl out before the man turned the knife on himself. Deputies tried to use a taser to stop him, but were unsuccessful. Yolanda Venezuela, a longtime anti-child abuse advocate, says, although the little girl may be young, this can have a lasting impact. When this child gets in high school or even as an adult, they can face some serious uh, emotional issues connected to this type of trauma that occurred. Now, BCSO is still investigating this incident that happened yesterday evening, and they're investigating that relationship between the victim and the suspect and the little girl. All five deputies involved will be placed on administrative leave for five days. That's standard procedure. They'll have access to the department's psychologist. All right, we are still seeing more video showing just how extensive the damage was after a tornado ripped through Guadalupe County. The county judge declaring a local state of disaster for the next seven days. At least 24 properties severely damaged by high winds, hail, rain, and yes, that tornado. County officials connected the affected families with the Red Cross and hope to provide additional help in the future. And it was another night of deadly storms slamming the south, this time New Orleans. And now we're getting clear a picture of that extensive damage. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has a story. Overnight, new images of the deadly tornado striking New Orleans. Oh my God. Causing widespread damage across the city's lower Ninth Ward and St. Bernard Parish, two areas devastated by Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. We have a home that was lifted off its foundation and put into the middle of a street right around the corner from here. Emergency responders are conducting search and rescue efforts in New Orleans. Authorities last night said there were multiple injuries and at least one death from the tornado. This is going to be a long haul. Um, we just got off the phone with the governor. Tomorrow we will have a better assessment of all of the homes the number of homes, the number of people affected. In Starkville, in neighboring Mississippi, the fast-moving line of storms also downing trees on the campus of Mississippi State University. At least 40 tornadoes were reported Tuesday across Texas, Oklahoma, and Mississippi, all from the same storm system. At least one person was killed during the storms in Texas. ABC's Marcus Moore is in the city of Round Rock near Austin. You can see the house just behind me. It has been destroyed, and we've seen just debris spread throughout the entire neighborhood. Damage was also reported in Alabama as the storms move east. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. That's some devastation. You saw it firsthand. Yeah, I was. I visited a man whose house was just destroyed. His RV, but his 70-year-old immobile father was walk, able to walk away unhurt. So, okay. That's some positive it. care. Time now, 5:08, 48 degrees out. Well, still ahead, why Instagram is now letting all users tag products in their feed posts. Mm -hmm. And up next, ways that you can make sure you're getting the proper value when it comes to your insurance coverage. Hopefully this can save you some, uh, some extra dollars. Take a look outside with live cam. 48 degrees at 509 this morning. A beautiful crisp start to our spring morning on March 23rd. How will things shape up for later in the day? Mike will let us know when we come back.
Good morning and welcome back. So have you noticed that your car and your home insurance goes up? Well, if it still hasn't, it still could, and that's because costs are on the rise. Of course, inflation is mostly to blame for this, along with the cost of materials and upgrades and technology in vehicles. So Rich Johnson with the Insurance Council of Texas says, a call to your insurance company could help you bring those costs down. Something a lot of people recommend is building your home, renters, or car insurance. And even though it can be time consuming, shopping around for better rates can pay off. The key here is to shop. Uh, go ahead and call those different companies. Uh, you know, check online, give them a call, and um, you'll most likely save a few bucks uh, by, by just changing companies. So with hail and hurricane season ahead, he also recommends that your home and vehicle are that are not under insurance to go ahead and get that insurance. We have a link on KSAT.com that can help you compare costs. All right, time now, 513, 48 degrees up. Well, still ahead, why Uber is temporarily removing the ability to split fares. And Zoom, letting you be a little more creative when you show up to your next virtual meeting. We're going to explain in just a bit. Not a cat. now at dreamsresorts.com with savings of up to 40%. Nicorette knows quitting smoking is freaking hard. You get advice like try hypnosis or quit cold turkey. Kidding me? Instead, start small with Nicorette, which can lead to something big. Start stopping with Nicorette. What could the father of the bride possibly be doing on his phone? Checking with his marital advisor to see if he's on track to do this again and again. Did I mention she made the guest list? Digital tools so impressive, you just can't stop. What would you like the power to do? Well, Instagram is expanding its product tagging feature to all users. ABC's Mona Kozar Opti has the details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram is expanding its product tagging feature. As of now, only users with business or creator accounts can tag products in their posts. But Instagram says the feature will be available to everyone over the next few months. A big change coming to Uber. Next month, the company will temporarily ditch the split fare option. Uber is reworking the way riders split fares. The ride-sharing company plans to roll out a new and improved option soon. Uber started offering the feature in 2013. And you could be a fox in your next Zoom meeting, or a rabbit, or a dog. Zoom has a new avatars feature that replaces you with a virtual animal. The character also mimics your facial expressions. The company says the avatars can bring some fun to meetings and help reduce Zoom fatigue. Just make sure you turn it off before you talk to your boss. Those are your Tech Bites. All right, so from time to time, because I tore my Achilles, I do reporting from home via mm -hmm. Zoom. Mm -hmm. Next week, I'm coming in hot with the uh, the giraffe. The giraffe? Yeah. I don't know if I I don't know what animal I'd be. Maybe mm. like a cute dog, koala, okay. some kind of creature. All right. It's St cute. Stephen Cavazos, what animal would you be on Zoom? A flamingo. Oh, well done. <laughs> why not? He knows. He knows. <laughs> oh yeah. If they have the option, why not? Uh, let's go ahead and get a look at the roadways right now. Not spotting anything odd out there from these shots at Trans Guide, but there are issues that drivers definitely want to be aware of before they get out on the roadways. Two hundred one at Grayson, though, not a problem there. But some of the bigger problems are out by Loop 410 and Loop 13, and the same spot that we saw some issues yesterday. We'll get to that right now. As you can see on the map, we have that pinpointed in the eastbound lanes of I-35 and 18 wheeler that looks like it's been jackknifed. Uh, first responders have been out there for quite a while working to clear this scene up uh, actually since before one this morning, but thankfully we're not seeing slowdowns in that direction. But drivers again, make sure that you are planning ahead and look for those alternative routes. I'm going to do the same thing here in the traffic lab, but not really seeing any problems anywhere else. Let's go ahead and get a wide bird's eye view of the map. We're seeing lots of green on the screen, which is what we like to see as people get their noon days started. But again, some problems out here off of loop 410. I-35 at Ben's Engelman is where it's been detected, but we do see some closures out there. No slowdowns just yet, but Mike was just mentioning a few minutes ago that there was actually a big crash there yesterday, so it looks like a copy and repeat kind of day with the same problems out there, guys. Thank you, Steven. All right, Mike, what do we got going on behind you? Make Blue some friends? Blue Super bonnets. cute. Yeah. Uh, Gryffindor, Riddick, oh. and uh, Draco's first. Blue bonnet picture there, and yeah, look at the great looking uh, field out there, and everybody's posing 
happily. So you always try and get your kids out there. I don't know if anybody's ever done that when the kids are little. It's like you got to have the perfect and they're not cooperating and all that. But at least the dogs did. All right, clear skies right now and it's cool this morning. We've got temperatures that are going to continue to drop down to 40 degrees here in town. We've already got some 30s in parts of the hill country and enough of a breeze to add just a bit of a bite to some of these temperatures. We are going to have more uh, mostly clear skies this morning. And then as we roll on through the rest of the mid morning, we'll see a few more high clouds building on in here. We'll make it into the low 60s by noon and then we're going to be topping off right around the low 70s later on today. And we are going to have more clouds hanging around here. A lot of high clouds. I call it partly sunny skies and we'll have enough of a breeze later on today with this very, very dry air to prompt this the fire weather watch. And you know, you think about a couple of days ago where all the rain was, and there was plenty of it pretty much east of 281 and that's where we don't have the fire weather watch. So it has helped out somewhat, but off to the west and then down to the south, we do have dry conditions, not only on the ground, very, very dry air uh, in the atmosphere and also breezy conditions. Now, as far as the cloud cover, we are starting to see a bit more moisture come in here in the mid upper levels of the atmosphere. And so that's why we'll start to see some of those mid and high clouds throughout the day. Dew point temperatures, though, down here at the surface, therefore the humidity are going to remain extremely low. So even uh, tomorrow, we're going to have enough of a breeze. And I wouldn't be surprised if another fire weather watch would be uh, issued for tomorrow. And then Again, stays very comfortable all the way through the rest of the week and most all of the weekend. But by Sunday, we start to see the humidity kind of come back in here and these dew points are really going to start to move in here then by Monday. So here's the uh, long range computer model. And again, we have some of those mid high clouds hanging around here today. Clear on out. Gorgeous weather for the rest of the week. We're going to make it up into the low to mid 80s, low humidity, lots of sunshine, and that's going to be the situation through most all of the weekend. Then we go into the first part of the week and the clouds start to move back on in here. Fairly cloudy Tuesday, and we do have a chance for some rain by Tuesday and Wednesday. So at least as that humidity comes back in, it hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, will lead to a few showers around here as we go into the middle part of next week. But again, that's still a week away. A lot can change, but at least it's encouraging. 63 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies, and wind's going to start to pick up out of the northwest about 10, 20 miles per hour gusting from there, and then a high temperature today up to 71. So we'll be five degrees below normal today with partly sunny skies. Tomorrow, another cool morning. As a matter of fact, jackets, not a bad idea the rest of the, uh, the work week and school week. 75 tomorrow, still kind of breezy. Then we get up into the 80s, still low humidity, so it is going to be comfortable. And the humidity will begin to return later on in the weekend. More humid Monday, Tuesday, more clouds. And again, hopefully, fingers crossed, lucky charm, everything else you can think of for rain by the middle of next week. All right, Mike, it looks like spring in San Antonio. Definitely it is spring and we've got the blue bonnet pictures too. So I love seeing the blue bonnet starting to pop up on the side of the road. Uh, hopefully we'll see more of them. And, and we do have to say if you do see them, take, do, yeah, do not be pick careful them. taking pictures. Don't, don't, stop don't the squash them either. Right. Don't step on them. What kind of monster squashes them? Some people do. Time now, 522, 47 degrees out. Well, a popular streaming series gets a second season and your first look at the big screen adaptation of a bestseller. That's next in your morning spotlight. But first, taking a look at those lotto numbers. Pick three, six, two, seven, fireball two. Daily four, six, nine, nine, three. Fireball zero. Catch five, four, nine, 13, 17, 35. Mega millions, eight, 15, 21, 27, 61. Mega ball eight, mega plier three. All right, welcome back. Time to get ready for more Carrie Bradshaw plus Netflix celebrating their filmmakers. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. If you have good friends in your corner, anything's possible. Carrie, party of three? Carrie and the gang are back for another round of Cosmos. HBO Max announced the Sex and the City revival series and just like that has been renewed for a second season. No production return date has been announced for the streaming program. Spent. Leaving and losing his Alaskan identity. <laughs> Netflix and Adobe celebrate a new generation of filmmakers with the winning projects of their The Great Untold short film contest. The three selected trailers were made into short films using grants provided by the two companies and selected from more than 16,000 submissions. The films are available on Netflix's YouTube channel. Being isolated was one thing. Being hunted, quite another. 
This is your first look at the big screen adaptation of Where the Crawdads Sing, based on the best-selling novel. The drama stars Daisy Edgar Jones and features a new original song from Taylor Swift. The movie is expected to hit theaters July 15th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 527, 47 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, President Joe Biden is traveling to Europe today for an emergency NATO summit about Ukraine. We'll have more details on his trip that has three main goals. And a lot of people work out to lose weight. So coming up on GMSA at 6 a.m., we're going to tell you about a mental checklist you should take with you when you head to the gym. Making headlines this morning, President Joe Biden heading to Europe today, an emergency NATO summit regarding Ukraine. A chilly start. We've dropped the degrees there, 47 at 530 this morning. Will it be a beautiful spring day? Mike Osterhage will let us know in just a bit. Good morning, Wednesday, March 23rd. We are in spring, and yesterday it started to feel like it. Yeah, it was beautiful outside. I mean, a little chilly at some mm -hmm. time and a little windy, uh, but but beautiful after you know the, the crazy storms that came oh, yeah. through in our area. All right, so Mike Osterhage, 47 now. What can we expect throughout the day? Well, we'll continue to cool down this morning and then uh, warm up. But yeah, it's still going to be on the coolish side later on today. And you know, you talked about the folks that that had the damage, the storm damage from a couple of days ago. Uh, at least the weather is nice for the, the cleanup process for those folks. And uh, this morning we will continue to drop down 48 degrees out there at the airport. Really, really dry air, slight bit of a breeze. We don't have any clouds as of right now, so that's going to allow this temperature to continue to drop down. But with that breeze, we do have somewhat of a wind chill to deal with right now. 34 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 45 at the airport, and still 37 is the wind chill in New Braunfels. And wind is going to be picking up later on today. We've got very, very dry air in place, and of course, the ground is just parched. And so, yeah, once again, fire weather watch has been issued for uh, pretty much all of our area with the exception of where a lot of the rain fell a couple of days ago and this is from 11 o'clock this morning up until seven o'clock this afternoon and again you kind of cut the area in half and that's where we didn't get the rain the past a uh, couple or a couple of days ago so again fire weather watch now, i wouldn't be surprised if one is issued for tomorrow as well because we still have really dry air in place and it's going to be breezy enough oak is on the moderate side this is yesterday's reading of course the updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, maybe a couple of hours or so low amounts of everything else but of course we are starting to really get into that oak season i don't know about you if you have live oak trees but all those leaves have fallen now just waiting for the catkins to start sprouting a few clouds this morning, chilly, and then partly sunny skies later on this afternoon. So we'll have a few more clouds around here. That will help to keep temperatures down about 5 degrees below normal. So we'll only be in the low 70s today. And again, it is going to be on the breezy side. Sunshine, and it will get much, much warmer over the next couple of days, up into the mid-80s. And with the dry air, yes, that creates a higher fire danger, but it does make it feel comfortable. And good-looking weekend in store. It is going to be warm, and the humidity is going to start its return by later on Sunday. And more humidity to start off next week week. More details on the weekend coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, still got that big problem on the east side? It hasn't cleared up just yet, Mike. Drivers can expect cleanup for at least the next uh, few minutes, uh, or we should say a little while, actually. 35 at Ben's England is a shot from Transgetting. As you can see, that we do have some first responders out there working to clear up this mess. Again, if you're just waking up with us, I spoke to our friends over at Transguide this morning. They're telling us that this is actually an 18-wheeler that Jack and I filled just before one this morning, so obviously this is an area you're going to want to avoid, especially if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. Thankfully, we're not seeing delays in that area. We're going to label it off I-35 South and a Benzingman near Loop 4 410 and Loop 13, where there were some issues yesterday. So again, make sure that you are driving carefully through that area. But as we are looking at the map, not the only problem this morning. Let's take that drive over here to the northwest side. Loop 4, loop, pardon me, Loop 1604 at Braun Road. A second crash has been picked up. Not seeing anything on the Transguide cameras just yet, but we're going to keep our eyes on this and see how that shapes up as the morning does go on. Let's get that wide view at 533. We're not seeing problems anywhere else. In fact, we're seeing a lot of green on the screen, and of course, that's what we'd like to see as we're getting the new day started. Same thing here if you're traveling into San Antonio from any of these communities. I-10 eastbound, Bernie to downtown 25 minutes, 27 if you're coming in from 281 and Bulverde, and 25 if you're traveling in those southbound lanes on I-35 and New Braunfels. But again, watch out here. We're going to again look for those alternative routes as well as some construction spots to be on the lookout for. That's coming up in the next few moments. Max Hero. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say speed may have played a role in a crash that killed a bicyclist. 
The crash happened on the north side of town on Bassey Road near McCulloch. That's where we find our Katrina Weber, who is live there now. Now, Katrina, we understand there were two other injuries, including a child. That's right. Uh, it's the woman who police say was driving the car and a baby in the car with her. Now, both of those people were taken to a hospital for treatment. Uh, police are still trying to determine exactly what happened, but they say it's possible that the 35-year-old driver was speeding. Her car rolled over during the crash on Bassey Road, which happened shortly after 10 last night. Somehow in the middle of that, police say her car also hit the man on the bicycle, killing him. Officers were able to get the woman and baby out of the overturned car. It's so, too soon to tell whether they plan to seek any charges against that driver. And they also have not released any information yet on the bicyclist who was killed. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to the latest overseas, President Joe Biden traveling to Brussels, Belgium today. He'll meet with NATO leaders and other allies tomorrow to address the war in Ukraine. CNN's Amy Kiley takes a look at three objectives on his trip. The president is traveling to Europe to ensure we stay united on all three critical fronts. Helping the Ukrainian people defend themselves, imposing and increasing costs on Russia, and reinforcing the Western alliance. President Joe Biden is flying to Brussels today for an emergency NATO summit on Ukraine tomorrow. The White House says his first objective is to help the Ukrainians. Ukraine says some 100,000 people are trapped in the besieged city of Mariupol. I've got elderly parents and four pets that I will not leave. Thanks to good people and people who helped, it became possible. Other Ukrainians are battling to protect the capital, Kyiv, and other cities. And the UN says more than three and a half million refugees have fled to neighboring countries to escape the fighting. I have a little baby. I love my family. I have. I had plans. I don't have plans. Biden's second goal is to help impose further costs on Russia for its actions. You know who is ordering war and who is promoting it. Almost all of them use Italy as a holiday resort. So do not be a resort for them. The trip is also to show that the U.S. stands with its allies. The closer you are to this Russian threat, the more real it is and the more frightening it is. And so what's happening in Ukraine? People in the Baltic states like Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, they can see it happening there. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. A federal judge has found the founder of the group Cowboys for Trump guilty of a charge connected to the U.S. Capitol riots. Coy Griffin was found guilty of entering and remaining in a restricted area Tuesday, but he was acquitted of a second charge of disorderly and disruptive conduct. Now, prosecutors say Griffin trespassed on U.S. Capitol grounds back on January 6th while Vice President Mike Pence was there. Griffin, who is a county commissioner in New Mexico, argued that he was at the Capitol leading others in prayer that day. He now faces a potential fine, probation and jail time up to one year when he is sentenced on June 17th. Investigators are releasing photos of the hotel room where comedian Bob Saget died. Now, the photos were taken by Orange County crime scene techs in Orlando in the hotel room after Saget's death back on January 9th. Some of the comedian's personal effects are still seen in that room. Orange County's chief medical examiner believes Saget's deadly head injuries could have been caused by a fall on the carpeted floor. Other hard surfaces visible in the photo show no sign of any impact or damage. The photos include a selfie that Saget took with a Ritz-Carlton valet, which show no signs, no visual signs of a head injury at that time. Remember, back in February, a judge granted the Saget family's request that the full report on his death remain sealed. WikiLeaks says its founder Julian Assange is set to marry his fiancée Stella Morris today in London's HMP Belmarsh Prison. According to a statement from WikiLeaks, Assange and Morris will be surrounded by just a few friends and family members. There will only be four guests and two witnesses allowed to attend the ceremony, as well as two security guards. Assange and Morris have two children together. WikiLeaks media team says hundreds of Assange supporters plan to gather outside the prison for the event. The United States has charged him under the Espionage Act for his role in publishing classified military and diplomatic cables. Last week, the U.K. Supreme Court refused to allow Assange his latest appeal against extradition to the U.S. Time now, just about 540, 47 degrees out. Well, still ahead, what it took to remove 
thousands of Ooh. bees from a classroom in Pleasanton. That's terrifying. All right, and here we go. We are seeing more and more electric vehicles. So next up, Maserati's all new electric SUV. But, but how much does it that's cost? That's the thing, I saw that, like Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche are looking at electric vehicles and it's like, okay, the electric part's not the problem. It's the money. Show me the money. All right, 47 degrees at 539. Mike will let us know if you need a jacket for us a day when we come back. In your morning consumer headlines, oil prices with supplies getting tighter across the country. Future prices for the U.S. benchmark West Texas Intermediate have topped $110 a barrel. Markets are waiting to see about the possibility of more sanctions on Russia and world's second largest oil exporter when President Biden meets with European leaders tomorrow. And Maserati unveiling its new vehicle and it's electric sport utility vehicle. This is an SUV and it is the second SUV of the Maserati, Italian luxury brand's history, and it's the first that's gonna be all electric. So it is an early step towards making the Maserati brand fully electric by 2030. The compact SUV is gonna be available with a high performance V6 engine or a four cylinder engine with a mild hybrid system with gas powered versions available for sale Later this year, the full electric version debuting in 2023. And here you go, Sarah Costa. This is the answer to the question we've been asking. It's going to cost between eighty and hundred thousand mm. dollars. Yeah, I just I literally just Googled it because I didn't know mm. if you were going to answer my question or not. Yeah. I mean, you got to have money yeah. to buy those cars to begin with. Right. Although at this point, with the gas prices rising, six dollars a gallon, you're pretty much paying for it either way. Are you that yeah. much money? Uh, it's a lot. I don't know. I can never afford that. So time now. <laughs> I'll never know. 47 degrees out. All right. Up next, we check in with the Animal Defense League and a pet that needs a new home. Julie's getting a workout this morning because of this little baby. This is actually a six-year-old, but has more energy than about 100 puppies put together. Yeah. Who is this little one? Okay, right there. Get this one. I know. She's so cute. She does have a lot of energy, but her name is Starlight, and she is a terrier mix. She is um, six years old and 66 pounds, and she really is a cuddle bug, but she is going to need a home that can take her on some walks. Yeah, and maybe not real small kids just because she... Uh, it has the strength of a buffalo yeah. and will you know plow everybody down so and you got spe yes it's okay yes indeed but yeah. i'll tell you what boy this will be a good running partner yeah. and you're all going to sleep good you've got a special with big dogs right we do we do and we have a lot of sweet dogs just like starlight um so our goal for the month of march is to get 125 uh canines adopted and i'm not going to lie mike the name of our special is we like big mutts <laughs> <laughs> but um it does doesn't only apply to big mutts. We're counting any canine that is six months or older. Oh, okay. So we're about 46% of goal, um, and our larger, older dogs are the population that that are the hardest to get adopted. You know, everybody wants a puppy, um, but older dogs have so much love to give, yeah. and they are they just appreciate you for life. And you know what you're getting? I mean, you're getting a mm -hmm. big personality right here, big energy and all that. Yeah. But hey, lots of love there, and you should take up all the room on the couch. So if you'd like, remember. We like big mutts. I love it. They're at an Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Again, you got your arm workout today. Hey, I know, this thing, so. I know. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and she's gone. All right. So speaking of animals, actually, this one might not be as cute and cuddly. A wall full of bees and honey, because, you know, honey and bees, it is now cleared in a... Pleasanton classroom after being safely removed from their temporary home. So the bee removal happened in a classroom that used to be barracks. Photojournalist Joe Arredondo shows us what it took to rehome thousands of bees. Every third bite of food, vegetable fruit uh, that you eat, uh, the honey bee helped produce. They're tearing this building down and that's how they found the beehive. You give them a little smoky smoke. We're going to take all of this off and expose the beehive. We'll put them into, give them a new house. Uh, and after we give them a new house, we'll, we'll take them home with us and then they can uh, produce uh, honey and, and help pollinate uh, our fields. Bees. Oh. This is where the honey is starting. So they do have a lot of honey. They're not here to hurt us. 
Right now they're just trying to figure out what's happening. They're like, is this giant bear going to eat us? And the answer is no, I'm gonna help you out. If you see a honey beehive and you want it, uh, to remove it or to relieve yourself of the nuisance, then you should call uh, someone like us, uh, American Honey Bee Protection Agency. You should do that so that you, we can sustain uh, this life form. So important. I'm Yeah, so never intrigued. exterminate bees. If you have a problem, always call bee removal because we need to preserve them. They are so important and it's crazy they are, the, the beekeepers are just scooping up with their hands because they know that the bees aren't aggressive, but that takes years of practice and understanding that bee behavior. Well, anyway. Ooh, all, all right, right. let's take it. I don't buzz even know over. how to. Let's buzz over to Stephen Cavazos. <laughs> well done. Well, I was going to say all that buzz is happening right here off 35 at Ben Zingleman, Max. Sarah, this has been the problem spot for several hours, but uh, for a moment, I was actually watching this crane over here that was actually turning this trailer portion upright. So we were seeing that happening just a few minutes ago. So it does look like progress is being made here, but we're not seeing any slowdowns in that direction just yet. But keep in mind, this could be a little while before we start to see resolution. This happened just before one this morning. Uh, 18 wheeler that was jackknife. So again, we are seeing some progress, but slow progress. 35 South Bennett, Ben Zingleman is where we have that pinpointed on our map. Not the only spot that we're keeping an eye on here off of 1604. Still trying to find out which direction this crash is in off of Braun Road. I was checking the trans guide cameras. It does look like some of them are out in that direction. So drivers, make sure that you stay alert this morning. And of course, make sure that you mark your calendars because we still have some construction happening over here. We're going to jump back over here to 35 410. Pardon me. Uh, that started on Sunday, March 20th. We'll wrap on Friday, March 25th, 9 in the evening to 5 in the morning. You can expect some road work out there in the eastbound entrance ramp closure from Perrin Bottle Road. You can also just really quick drive up here to 35. Want to take a look at New Braunfels for our drive friends up there. Things are looking fine this morning. But again, the problem right here, 35 at Bing Zingleman. Make sure that you are driving carefully and look for those alternative routes. But thankfully, no slowdowns just yet. All right, Stephen Cavazos, thank you so much. Mike? Yes. Did you find the pot of gold? I think so. I did yesterday. I got to give a quick shout out to the uh, solid waste folks. I had something extremely big and heavy that I couldn't lift my own on my own, and they were just happened to be driving up the alley oh. or doing um, the garbage pickup yesterday. And guys popped out, took two minutes, helped me out. So, nice. so great. Thank you very, very much for that. Yeah, gorgeous picture, the double rainbow. There's the, the first one and the, the second one right there. And yeah, I would think the pot of gold would be right down in there somewhere, but. Nothing. All right, here's a picture looking up 10 toward the northwest. There's the medical center, and as you can see, uh, no problem there. Everything is uh, fairly clear as of right now. 48 degrees current temperature, Balverde 40, 35 in Kerrville. That's the actual air temperature, and then we do have somewhat of a uh, wind chill to, to deal with on top of that. We'll continue to drop down to 40 degrees this morning, and we'll have a pretty good looking sunrise this morning. A couple of clouds here and there. Clouds start to work their way in as we go in toward 10 o'clock mid morning in toward noon. A few more clouds into the low 60s, and we are going to have a decent breeze out there as well today. And winds are going to be a little gusty at times, and the clouds are going to be thickening up as we go into mid afternoon and then by dinner time, uh, four or five o'clock, we're going to be right around 71 for a high temperature. So about five degrees below normal. Very, very dry air. Obviously, the ground is extremely dry out to the west and windy conditions. So we do have fire weather watch goes into effect for a good chunk of the area. This does include San Antonio, uh, New Braunfels going up 281 and then everybody down to the south and to the uh, west and even down along the, the coastal plain right there. And that's from 11 up until 7 o'clock. Low temperatures the next couple of mornings are going to be jacket weather and then low temperatures stay in the 50s and 60s by the first part of next week. High temperatures, another Coolish, although that's normal. And then we're up into the 80s. Still low humidity going in toward the weekend, though. So it's going to be a really, really pleasant weekend. Then the humidity starts to work its way back in here by late in the weekend and starting off first of next week. Although on the downside with the low humidity, that means fire danger is still going to remain high for the next couple of days. 63 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. Again, it's going to be on the breezy side and then a high temperature today up to 71, partly sunny skies. Then next couple of days, 43 tomorrow, 48 Friday morning, plenty of sunshine in the afternoon. We make it up in the 80s Friday, 80s through the weekend. More clouds Monday, Tuesday, hopefully a chance of rain then by the middle part of next week. More coming up after this.
Coming up here on GMA, we will be covering all of the severe storms damage and the forecast. Plus, we are in Ukraine and President Biden heading to Europe this morning to meet with our allies as the war rages on. There is growing desperation in the city of Mariupol, while Ukrainian forces have taken back some territory outside Kyiv. We are there live. Plus, we're going to speak with dancing pro Max Chmerkovsky. He was stuck there in Ukraine, got out, now has gone back to Poland to help refugees. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. And here at home, still a lot ahead on our next part of GMSA. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers asking for your help, trying to figure out what exactly happened that led to this robbery at a convenience store earlier this week. We're joined by Jonathan Cotto with those details. And we're also going to have the latest on an overnight fire just west of downtown. At one point, more than 20 fire units on the scene. We have the latest. And a quick live look. Out there at that situation at 35 at Ben Zingelman, Stephen Cavazos has the latest information you need to know before you head out the door. One person dead this morning after a rollover crash on the city's north side. We have the details coming up. Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson gearing up for a final day of confirmation hearings. I'm Alex Roche in Washington. I'll have a preview coming up. A rare Andy Warhol painting is expected to sell for a record number. We'll tell you how much. And the latest on those deadly swarms that swept through the south overnight. We have a look at the aftermath. Taking a live look outside, 46 degrees, that temperature keeps dropping, another chilly start to a spring crisp morning. Michael, let us know how long you'll need the jacket for today. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 23rd. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. All right, so you said it best. It is a crisp start to the morning. So give us the rundown. Sarah Costa, when you leave the house, we know under 60 degrees, not ideal. Oh, no, no, no. I have to have a fleece on, mm -hmm. sometimes like uh, some sweatpants underneath the okay. dress. But then the layers start coming off, you know, but in studio, I'm always, I'm always cold. Always cold. Yeah, anything under 65, I'm like frozen. But Mike, I didn't picture it this way. Remember the little brother in Christmas story? <laughs> he said he looked like a tick about to pop when she comes in. I mean, it's yeah, like Sarah it's, Kim. It's so. not dramatic at all. Um, it is chilly out there. And yeah, we are below normal this time of year. We're going to be coolish today, but uh, still a, a nice looking day. We are going to have a few more clouds hanging around here. And we're looking, uh, this is 10, looking up uh, to the north and west. And yeah, beautiful view out there in toward the, the medical center. Temperatures right now, 45 in town, 34 curves. So in your backyard up in portions of the hill country, you may be just below freezing 38 at uh, Fredericksburg. And then we've got somewhat of a wind chill on top of that 42 here in town. No wind really to speak of out there in parts of the hill country. 40 is the wind chill in New Braunfels, 39 up the road in Balverde. Of course, very dry air means it is comfortable. We don't have humidity to deal with. But then on the flip side of that, that uh, along with the wind and the fact that the ground is so dry, we do a fire weather watch that goes into effect at 11 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock. This does include San Antonio going up in toward New Braunfels all the way up 281 out to the west and down to the uh, south. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see another fire weather watch uh, issued at some point for tomorrow because we're still going to have the dry air in place and still a breeze. Oak is on the moderate side, low amounts ash. Juniper Hackberry updated uh, allergen counts going to be coming out in about uh, an hour, hour and a half or so. So temperatures will continue to drop down a few more degrees. I think we bottom out at 40 here in town and we are going to have more clouds as the day rolls on. They'll it's not going to be like a thick cloud cover, but just more clouds than sunshine. 63 degrees today at noon and also wind is going to be out of the northwest 10 to 20 miles per hour gusting at times. Then we'll top off at 71 degrees. It is going to definitely feel like spring the next few days. Matter of fact, we're going to be on the above normal side getting up into the 80s. What about the weekend? Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Okay, we've been looking at that big problem. Is that still there? That's still there, Mike. Uh, right now, Loop 410 at Loop 13. This is a different view from that issue. Let's get a closer look with TransGuide. Uh, what I was noticing during the commercial break is that some vehicles are actually trying to exit on a 35, and obviously that is a problem spot that you're going to want to avoid. Just check this camera out right now. You see those vehicles trying to avoid that area. Now, there are those overhead signs that do 
do warn drivers of an accident ahead, so make sure to pay attention and again, avoid those flashing lights and veer off to a different direction. You want to make sure you stay focused on the roads this morning. We do want to give first responders a break as well. Let's go ahead and take a look right there. If you are just waking up with us, that crash has been picked up off I-35 southbound at Ben Zingelman. Keep in mind, this was an 18 wheeler that was jackknifed just before one this morning, so the process to clean all of this up has been quite a while. So watch out there. It does look like we are seeing progress over here on the northwest side with a crash that was reported off 1604 at Braun Road. Not seeing anything on the cameras because those cameras appear to be down, but no slowdowns and Textod has actually cleared that from their site, so not a problem spot there. Let's go ahead and get that bird's eye view of the metro area at 604. We're not spotting any slowdowns just yet, but make sure that you are taking it easy because the commute coming into San Antonio isn't going to be a bad one. Pleasant drive from Pleasanton 37 northbound 28 minutes to downtown 18 minutes. If you are traveling in those eastbound lanes from Highway 90 and 16 minutes, little time from Lytle on I 35 northbound, so no problems there, but the problem seems to be here over on 410 at Loop 13. We'll watch it closely and give you those updates coming up in the next few moments. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. So right now the search is on for a trio of robbery suspects. Investigators hope you can help track them down. They were involved in an aggravated robbery at a Southside gas station. So Jonathan Cotto is there live. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Max. Good morning, Sarah. That aggravated robbery actually happening at this quick trip here on South South San Moreno near Loop 410. Police tell us all this happened on Sunday around midnight. Now take a look at your screen right now. We're told three three suspects approach three men in the parking lot, pointed guns, allegedly pointed guns at the victims, robbed them and took off with their vehicle. Now anyone with any information regarding this robbery is urged to contact Crime Stoppers at the number on your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. If the information you provide can lead to an arrest, you may be eligible for up to $5,000. Reporting from the city south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. One person is dead this morning after a rollover crash on the city's north side. It happened around 10 o'clock last night at the intersection of Bassey and McCullough Avenue. That's where police say a driver crashed and rolled their vehicle into a man riding a bicycle. The bike rider died at the scene. The driver and a child in the vehicle were hurt and taken to a hospital, but they are doing OK. At this time, it's still unclear what caused the crash and if the driver will face any charges. Also, overnight crews are trying to piece together a fire on the east side of town. It happened just after 3.30 on Darshell near, Alam near the Alamo Dome. Investigators say it was an abandoned home and no one was hurt. Right now, they are trying to figure out what sparked that fire. Now to the ongoing conflict and invasion in Eastern Europe. We're taking a live look out at Kyiv, the center point of Russia's war in Ukraine. Now, President Joe Biden is expected to depart today for an emergency NATO summit. There, he is expected to announce new sanctions on Russia for their invasion in Ukraine. Meanwhile, the Russian military suffering new setbacks on their front lines. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi explains the details. Breaking overnight, the Biden administration is expected to announce new sanctions against Russia, reportedly targeting hundreds of Russian lawmakers. The Wall Street Journal reports President Biden has prepared sanctions against 300 members of Russia's lower house of parliament and could reveal the punishments tomorrow when an emergency NATO summit gets underway in Brussels. The Pentagon says the summit may also address new security questions, including whether to keep U.S. troops in Eastern Europe for the long term as a deterrence to Russia. We're not sure where this is going to go, but the secretary is convinced that uh, wherever it goes, the, the security environment on the European continent is now changed. And we've got to think about it in a completely different way, no matter how this all ends up. Meanwhile, a victory for Ukrainian troops. Officials say they've reclaimed an important suburb of Kyiv from Russian forces, along with control of a key highway, allowing them to block the Russians from surrounding the capital. After 28 days of fierce resistance, a senior U.S. defense official says the Russian military has lost 10 percent of its combat power in Ukraine and troops are running low on food and fuel and some lack gear to protect them from frostbite. New satellite images of Mariupol show smoke filling the sky and civilian areas bombarded by strikes. And now a spokesperson for Vladimir Putin is refusing to rule out the use of nuclear weapons. If it is an ex existential threat for our country, then it can be used in accordance with our concept. 
Meanwhile, Ukrainian authorities say Russia detained 15 rescue workers from a humanitarian convoy who were trying to get food and other supplies to people in Mariupol. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Well, oil prices are moving up with supplies getting tighter across the country. Future prices for the U.S. benchmark with West Texas Intermediate have topped $110 a barrel. Markets are waiting to see about the possibility of more sanctions on Russia, the world's second largest oil exporter, when President Biden meets with European leaders tomorrow. And Apple services are back after outages affecting everything from the App Store to Apple Music and Maps. Okay, now that makes sense why things weren't downloading. It's not clear yet what caused the services to go down. And Instagram expanding its product tagging feature. As of now, only users with businesses or creator accounts could have tagged products in their posts. But Instagram says this feature will now be available to everyone over the next few months. And here you go, $200 million. That's how much a rare Andy Warhol painting is expected to sell for. The print is a 1964 silkscreen of Marilyn Monroe called Shot Sage Blue Marilyn. So if the piece does sell for $200 million, it'll be the most expensive painting of the 20th century ever sold at auction. So Sarah, when you buy the painting, where are you gonna put it? <laughs> That's really funny. I did have this as a poster, I yes. think, in my college dorm. It's and iconic. It did. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, $200 million. Wow. Yeah, there you go. All right, 610, 46 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, it was a deadly night of storms in the south. We'll have the latest on that aftermath in Louisiana and Mississippi. And just ahead, the Oscars are this weekend right here on KSAT 12. Two couples received matching nominations this year. We're going to explain. 46 degrees at 610, a crisp start to a spring morning. How long will this cool weather stick around for? And will things warm up in this, after this afternoon? Mike will let us know when we come back. Okay, getting a nomination for an Academy Award is a big deal, but sharing the recognition with your spouse in the same year deserves twice the celebration. Hollywood has a storied history of married couples being nominated or duly and winning Academy Awards dating back to 1931. This year, Penelope Cruz and Javier Bardem are nominated for an Oscar for their respective works. Both Kristen Dunst and Jesse Plemons are up for an Oscar as well. Though the couple aren't married, the last time this happened was more than 50 years ago. The last time was in 1966 with Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, who were both nominated for Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, uh, came from the same movie. This is not very often, but you know, it shows where greatness and talent tend to fall in love. So you can watch the 94th Academy Awards this Sunday night right here on KSET 12. I love the Oscars. I watch for the red carpet, the glamour, the dresses, the suits. I love it all. Yeah, I got nothing for it. Uh, I, I want to see Batman. Does that count? <laughs> whatever, whatever you want to see, Max. Well, speaking of glamorous, my, my favorite glamorous person in this studio with me, Steven. <laughs> I deserves. knew that was coming to me, Sarah well, Costa. <laughs> Thank you for that marvelous introduction. But, uh, you know, Max, we need to get you on board with the Oscar train here. Well, so. well, well apparently well, I'm not marvelous enough, so I don't <laughs> know. No, it's glamorous. Glamorous. <laughs> yes, you're still glamorous, Max. All right. Uh, you know, we actually have some good news here off 35 at Ben's Engelman. It does look like that problem that we've been talking about throughout the entire morning has finally cleared out. And we're seeing that last crew member actually leaving the scene where an 18-wheeler was jackknifed just before one this morning. Wasn't really Really causing any issues for those early bird commuters, but something that, of course, drivers always want to be on the lookout for. Uh, that was picked up. I'll be bringing you in here over off of I-35 southbound at Ben's Engelman. Uh, not wasn't causing problems, but we'll clear that from the map in just a moment. But some good news as we get the morning going. Uh, be on the lookout. We do have a stall here off State Highway 151 westbound at Callahan Road. Not really causing any problems in that direction. Stalls haven't really been the issue this morning, and we haven't really been seeing a lot of crashes as we take a look here around town. I-10 at Probent. It's it's been a quiet start, but again, that problem spot was over off I-35 at Ben's England that has thankfully cleared out, but everywhere else, 16 to 4 at Hausman, things are looking like they're in good shape, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Stephen. So, Mike, how are we looking out there with the weather?
Well, it's kind of chilly this morning, so maybe warm up the car jacket for the kids as you head off to school and temperatures are going to continue to drop down. We'll uh, bottom out right around 40 degrees just before the sun comes up. Mostly clear skies this morning. Then we're going to start to see some mid and high level clouds work their way on in here and we're going to be at 71 breeze out there. So it's one of those days where if you're in the shadows, uh, light jacket sweatshirt is going to be a fairly good idea. All right, take a look at this picture. Absolutely beautiful. This this was after some of those uh, storms just the other day. And yeah, what a gorgeous, gorgeous picture. Thank you very much for the KSAC Connect picture. All right, here we are looking off to the east. And right there, there's the uh, the smokestacks of the quarry. We've got a lot of clear skies. Going to be a, a beautiful start to this morning. The sunrise is going to be fantastic. And like I said, a lot more sunshine uh, throughout the morning hours. We bottom out at 40 and then begin the, the warm up. And uh, once that sun gets higher up in the sky, we're going to be gaining a good, you know, six, seven, eight degrees per hour and jump up to 54 at 10 o'clock and 63 by noon clouds. Again, it's not going to be like a thick, just gray day, but just a lot of those mid high clouds out there. So we'll call it partly sunny skies, make it in the upper 60s by mid afternoon and then top off at 71 later on today. And again, it is going to be breezy, dry air, parched ground. Fire weather watch goes into effect at 11 o'clock up until 7 o'clock. And unlike the red flag, red flag warnings the past couple of days, this one, which we're confined to the extreme western counties, this includes all of the western half or almost two thirds of our viewing area, including San Antonio and New Braunfels and then down to the uh, south as well. Here's some of those clouds again, mid high level clouds that are going to be sliding on in here throughout the day. OK, a couple of days ago we had our storms and the severe weather and then that line continued to work its way off to the east and it's working its way in through Florida right now. But it did produce more tornadoes. And what was interesting is when on Monday, Storm Prediction Center had on a scale of one to five, we were under about a two and three as far as the threat for severe weather. And New Orleans yesterday and parts of Mississippi, it was a four that so it was almost a sure thing that they were going to be getting some of those severe storms. And obviously they did around the country up to the north. That's a huge storm complex up there. And notice how we've got snow in the higher elevations there in New Mexico. So yeah, it's a pretty good uh, flow of cold air coming on in here. That's huge, huge low, which is working its way across the country. And this is what's keeping the dry air in place for us. And and we're going to remain very dry the next couple of days. So again, the fire danger is going to remain very high, kind of cool today as well as uh, tomorrow. And then we start the, the warming process. We're going to be well up into the 80s by the end of the week and the weekend. 63 at noon, partly cloudy skies, and it is going to be breezy today. High temperature up to 71 and more of those mid high clouds out there. And then the next couple of days again, Cool today, cool ish and tomorrow morning, still chilly. Grab a jacket and then we'll make it up to 75. So about a normal high. And then we get into the 80s heading into the uh, weekend. And by Sunday, the humidity is going to start to come back into the picture and then more humidity, more clouds, hopefully some rain by the middle part of next week. Well, we we're talking about those severe storms off to the east and more deadly storms. And this time it was in New Orleans and getting a clearer picture of all of the extensive damage there. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has more. Overnight, new images of the deadly tornado striking New Orleans. Oh my God. Causing widespread damage across the city's lower Ninth Ward and St. Bernard Parish, two areas devastated by Hurricane Katrina back in 2005. We have a home that was lifted off its foundation and put into the middle of a street right around the corner from here. Emergency responders are conducting search and rescue efforts in New Orleans. Authorities last night said there were multiple injuries and at least one death from the tornado. This is going to be a long haul. Um, we just got off the phone with the governor. Tomorrow we will have a better assessment of all of the homes the number of homes, the number of people affected. In Starkville, in neighboring Mississippi, the fast-moving line of storms also downing trees on the campus of Mississippi State University. At least 40 tornadoes were reported Tuesday across Texas, Oklahoma, and Mississippi, all from the same storm system. At least one person was killed during the storms in Texas. ABC's Marcus Moore is in the city of Round Rock near Austin. You can see the house just behind me. It has been destroyed, and we've seen just debris spread throughout the entire neighborhood. Damage was also reported in Alabama as the storms move east. Andrew Dimber, ABC News, New York. And time now is 621, 46 degrees out.
Sports. We're coming down to the final handful of NBA games, Max. All right, so here we go. There's a lot of confusion in the air. Where are the Spurs falling in the rankings? Well, they could still make the playoffs. A lot of people don't want that to happen. We're going to explain why, and we're going to explain why tonight is so important in just a bit. What can I do with less asthma? With Dupixent, I can do more beginner's yoga. Namaste. Namaste. Surprise parties. Oh, you guys. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks. For three. So I can do more of the things I love. <laughs> Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma that can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and can reduce or even eliminate oral steroids. And here's something important. Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Are you ready to do more with less asthma? Just ask your asthma specialist about Dupixent. Good morning, welcome back, and go Spurs go. Silver and Black on the road tonight, set to take on the Portland Trailblazers. And we're getting down to the final games of the NBA regular season. We know March Madness has been the talk of the town, but yes, the Spurs are still in the running for the playoffs, and this is a huge game. They're fighting for the last seat in the play-in bracket. They haven't been eliminated yet, so they're going to need every chance they can get to win. This is a big game. Spurs Blazers tipping off 9 o'clock this evening, and of course, it is in Portland. So go Spurs, go. I love this team. Got to be patient. Very excited. So you're saying there's a chance. Saying there's a chance. All right. Go Spurs, go. Time now. 625, 46 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an overnight fire just west of downtown. At one point, more than 20 fire units on scene. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt. Now, what you just saw was a crime stopper situation. Jonathan Cotto is going to be joining us with the latest in that. But right here, a deadly rollover crash this morning. We're going to have the latest from police. This all happened on the city's north side. We have the details. All right, we do know that situation of that turned over semi on 35 and 410 has finally cleared after being toppled over for several hours this morning. But Stephen Cavazos will give us an update on anything else happening on the roads this morning. A woman in a car and a man on a bicycle meet up in the worst way. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say that bicyclist was killed. I'll have more on that story. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. San Antonio police along with crime stoppers of San Antonio need your help in locating three suspects involved in an aggravated robbery taking place here at this quick trip. We have all the details coming up on GMSA. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 45 degrees out there to start your morning. Saracosa has been calling a crisp start to the morning. Will it warm up? And if so, when? We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. For now, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 23rd. Thank you so much for joining us. Starting your morning with us. So yesterday ended up being a gorgeous day out it there. It really did. It warmed up. It was beautiful. It was a little windy. Uh, Sarah Spivey and I went and had lunch at the Pearl. Nice. And it was, it was a gorgeous My invite day. must have gotten lost in the mail. Oh, what, what if you said yes, Max? That's neither here nor there. <laughs> All right, so Mike, it's a little colder now than how we started the morning. Why is that happening? Well, in a situation like this, when you have dry air, you don't have any clouds and very light wind, I mean, the, the heat just escapes out into space and so we continue to drop down and usually in a situation like this you'll have your coldest temperatures just as the sun is starting to come up because it hasn't had a chance to warm things up as of yet so and we've got clear skies out there as of right now and temperature has been dropping down steadily we were when I got into work this morning about uh, three o'clock we we're in the low 50s now down to 45 degrees and here's this very very dry air and hardly any breeze out there and like I said is clear sky so those three ingredients are in place for as we call it radiational cooling temperature wind chill temperature 42 degrees in town it feels like freezing out there in Kerrville 38 in Balverde 
needless to say, grab a jacket. And uh, later on this afternoon, we do have, or later on this morning, I should say, we do have a fire weather watch that goes into effect from 11 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock this evening. And this is almost the entire area without the uh, kind of the northeastern third. This is where, well, not only, again, dry air, breezy conditions, winds are going to be picking up. And of course, uh, with the exception of a quarter of an inch of rain here in town, this part of our viewing area really didn't get any rain uh, a couple of days ago with those storms that moved on through here. So fire weather watch goes into effect later on this morning, and I wouldn't be surprised if we get one tomorrow as well. Oak is moderate. Ash, Juniper, and Hackberry are all on the low side. So a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. Chilly, and then later on this afternoon, we are going to have more mid and high level clouds around here. Call it partly sunny skies. It is going to be windy. will be cool as far as normal, low 70s instead of mid 70s, where you would expect this time of year. Rest of the week, sunshine and warmer, especially by late in the week. We're going to be up to the low to mid 80s, and that's going to be the situation going into the weekend. Good looking weekend. Humidity is going to start its return by late in the weekend. We'll have a lot more humidity next week and hopefully some rain. Not until about a week from now. Details on the weekend forecast are coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso. So the big problem we had is gone, right? Yeah, that's what we saw on the Trans Guide camera, Mike. But check out 410 at Loop 13. Now, this was the same scene that we showed you a little bit earlier. The only difference is we're starting to see somewhat of a jam here with traffic that's trying to navigate through this area. Now, Trans Guide had, uh, was talking to our friends over there earlier this morning. They did tell us that this area was blocked off as first responders were working to clear that scene up. But it looks like maybe something else could be happening there. I'll find that out in just a moment and keep you posted, but this is where we're seeing the slowdown in the northbound lanes of 410. That crash was over here off I-35 southbound at Ben's Engelman, so we'll see if uh, somehow uh, this will clear up in the next few minutes, but right now, probably an area you're going to want to avoid, but if you have to travel through there, make sure that you look at those overhead signs, and keep in mind, first responders are still out there this morning, and keep on the lookout for stalls, because we are seeing them off here off I-10 westbound at Perrin, uh, pardon me, Fresno, and as we drive down over here, a second stall off State Highway 151 westbound at Callahan Road. Make sure you check those vehicles, but as we get that wide look at the map at 633, no slowdowns elsewhere. It looks like we're in good shape, and if you're traveling into San Antonio, good news is you're not going to find any delays here, but keep in mind, 29 minutes if you have to travel in from Bulverde and those southbound lanes of 281. Again, we'll find out what's going on here in the next few moments, 410 at Loop 13. It looks like a problem spot right now. Hopefully that will clear up in the next few minutes, but we'll have some info coming up as well. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. So one wrong move behind the wheel appears to be what led to the death of a man on two wheels. San Antonio police say the driver of a car swerved, setting in motion a deadly crash. So it happened on Bassey Road near McCall, the north side of town. Katrina Weber joins us there live. So Katrina, earlier you mentioned that the police believe the car's driver was speeding. Is that correct? Well, that's right. They told us that speed played a role in this crash. Now, what happened, they say, on a dark stretch of Bassey Road there as both the car and the bicycle headed this way toward McCullough. For some reason, the two ended up colliding shortly after 10 last night. Police are still trying to find out what caused that driver to swerve, but they say when she did, her car hit the man on the bicycle, then rolled over. They say that 35-year-old woman had a baby in the car with her, both of them were hurt and were taken to a hospital. The man on the bicycle did die at the scene. Police have not released much information about him at all, and they say they're still investigating to see whether there need to be any charges filed against the driver of the car. Reporting live on the north side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Right now, the search is on for three robbery suspects. Investigators now asking for your help trying to track them down. So these suspects involved in an aggravated robbery on the south side at a gas station. That's where we find Jonathan Cotto live. Good morning, Jonathan. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Max. Um, I'm located here where that robbery took place here at this quick trip located on south side of Samoret here near Loop 410. Now look at your screen right now. Police tell us these are the three suspects involved in this aggravated uh, robbery. They tell us that's when those suspects allegedly pointed guns at the victims, robbed them, and took off with their vehicle. Now police are asking anyone with any information on this robbery uh, to call Crime Stoppers at the number of your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. Any information you provide that can lead to an arrest may make you eligible for up to $5,000 cash reward. Reporting live from the city's south side, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 
Thank you, Jonathan. Also new this morning, repairs will need to be made after a driver went into a home overnight. Just take a look at this video. So this was the scene around midnight on F Street. That's on the east side of town. A woman in the home says she was in her bedroom when the driver crashed into it. She says she was knocked to the ground. Fortunately, she was not hurt. No word if the driver will face any charges. Investigators are trying to figure out what sparked a fire overnight. It happened around 2 o'clock this morning in the 500 block of North San Marcos near West Martin. and I-35, at one point, 21 fire units were at the scene. Right now, we're working to get more details about this fire. A man and woman are dead this morning after a murder-suicide at a far west side apartment. Take a look. This all happened yesterday at the Esperanza apartment complex just off of Petranco Road. Bear County Sheriff's deputies tell us a man called 911 saying that he killed a woman and there was a baby inside an apartment unit. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the man then let the, the deputies into the apartment where the woman was already dead. That suspect still holding a large knife. There was a young girl, a baby, six to seven months old. She was sitting unharmed in a high chair. A deputy took the girl out before the man turned the knife on himself. Deputies tried to use a taser to stop him, but were unsuccessful. Now, Yolanda Valenzuela, a longtime anti-child abuse advocate, says although the little girl is this young, this trauma can still have a lasting impact. When this child gets in high school or even as an adult, they can face some serious uh, emotional issues connected to this type of trauma that occurred. BCSO still investigating that relationship between the victim, the suspect and the young girl. All five deputies involved in the situation, they are placed on administrative leave for five days because that is standard procedure. The Supreme Court nominee Judge Katanji Brown Jackson returns to the Senate today for a final day of questioning. Tuesday, she sat for nearly 13 hours defending her record. Some Republicans calling her soft on crime and a liberal activist. ABC's Alex Brashey has the latest from Washington. Good morning. Judge Jackson gearing up for a final day of questioning after spending hours Tuesday defending her record. This morning, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson preparing for a final day in the hot seat, defending her record to Republicans who claim she's soft on crime. As someone who has had family members on patrol and in the line of fire, I care deeply about public safety. Judge Jackson also responded directly to misleading accusations that she's let child porn offenders off the hook. Nothing could be further from the truth. Republican Mitt Romney telling The Washington Post the attacks on Judge Jackson's sentencing record are off course. And Senator Ted Cruz questioning the judge on the political issue of critical race theory. It views every conflict as, as a racial conflict. Um, do you think that's an accurate way of viewing society? Senator, I don't think so, um, but I've never studied critical race theory and I've never used it. Cruz then asking Jackson about one children's book after another. The judge exasperated. Senator, I have not reviewed any of those books, any of those ideas. They don't come up in my work as a judge, which I'm respectfully here to address. Senator Sheldon Whitehouse, who is on the Judiciary Committee, says that he believes Judge Jackson is weathering these hearings extremely well. But still, these might just be a formality because Democrats don't need any Republican votes to push Judge Jackson through. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. At least one person is dead after a tornado tore through parts of New Orleans and its suburbs last night, flipping cars and ripping roofs off homes. Parts of St. Bernard Parish, which borders New Orleans to the southeast, appear to take the brunt of the storm. Rescue workers continue to search through the area for more people in need of assistance. The damage comes after other tornadoes spawned by the same storm system that hit parts of Texas and Oklahoma, killing at least one person and causing multiple injuries and widespread damage. And speaking of that damage, we are seeing more video showing just how extensive the damage was after one tornado ripped through Guadalupe County. Now, the county judge declaring a local state of disaster for at least the next seven days. At least 24 properties severely damaged by high winds, hail, rain, and yes, that tornado. County officials connected the affected families with the Red Cross, 
hoping to provide additional help in the future. And you were out and about yesterday. Actually, at this scene that you just saw, mm -hmm. uh, it was devastating. A man took us through his home destroyed, his brand new RV destroyed. Uh, his father, though, who is 70 years old and immobile, survived. Uh, it's such an incredible story. You can watch it on KSAT.com and on the app right now. Time now, 641, 45 degrees out. So many people work out for weight loss. So just ahead on GMSA, we'll tell you about the mental checklist you should be taking with you to the gym as well. All right, tons of celebrities have been making headlines for years due to their obsession with losing weight as far back as 2010 where uh, somebody passed Kourtney out. Kourtney Kardashian. Is it Kourtney Kardashian? Yeah, I got you. I, didn't, I don't remember this. She passed on a beach in Miami. She wow. later revealed she was not eating and working out multiple times a day, all to get ready for a photo shoot. So as of 2021 last year, the fitness industry estimated a $35 billion revenue from home workouts to commercial gyms. David Sears asking whether we've adopted the wrong reasons for our fitness goals. It has been proven that working out positively impacts our mental health. But when does a healthy desire turn into an obsession? You know when someone's obsessed with it, when they spend, you know, we're three to four hours into the gym, um, constantly doing repetitive exercises. Exercise addicts may use extreme training to maintain or lose body weight and often justify their behavior by believing a small break in their routine will cause them to gain weight. I don't think you'll ever cross that line of, of, of taking it too far and you always have a good perspective on how to train if you, if you tell yourself, I can have fat every once in a while, it's not gonna kill you. Forcing yourself to exercise when you don't feel well, experiencing severe stress and anxiety when you miss a workout, and missing social events because you'd rather hit the gym are all signs that you may be crossing over into a dangerous mental space. Small steps to keep yourself in check before a workout, examine your motivations, don't compare your progress to others, find new ways to move your body that doesn't feel like a workout, and set realistic goals. Overtraining syndrome is when you train too much or too hard without giving your body the proper time to rest. It can cause you to feel depressed, have an irregular heart rhythm, and even cause reproductive issues among other symptoms. To prevent this, scheduling rest into your workout routine is vital. David Sears, KSET 12 News. You know, working out, a lot of people out for a walk yesterday. Oh, we're going right to traffic. Yeah, we're going straight to traffic Hi. here. But, you know, realistic goal, Max, 10 push-ups for me. So okay. That's it. If I can get oh, it in you... a day, then that's all I need. Okay, I'm going to be your life motivational coach here. I, I wouldn't expect anything. Run, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get a look at Trans Guide. There are people that are out and about this morning. We are entering morning rush, but thankfully, no need to rush right now. We're not spotting issues out on the roadways. However, there were some problems out of 410 a little bit earlier that I've cleared out. But something did pop up. Uh, moments ago. I just put it on our map. 410 Eastbound at Goliad. A crash that was picked up there. Make sure you drive carefully in that area. Not causing an issue for drivers that are commuting in that direction, though. Uh, drive up here. We see this slowdown that's been building for quite a while. Uh, I talked to our friends over at TransGuy. They were saying that we had first responders and crews that were clearing up uh, following that 18-wheeler incident. Uh, thankfully, it, it has cleared out, but we are still seeing that slowdown in the northbound lanes of 410, so watch out there. Stalls also a trending issue off 410 Eastbound at Callahan Road. You can see a slow down there. There was another one down there at State Highway 151. Looks like I forgot to put that on the map, but wide look does show we're not really seeing a whole lot of congestion, but those spots that I just showed you are areas you're going to want to make sure that you prepare to slow down for. US 90 at Nogalitos. One last look at Trans Guide. Things are moving. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Mike, you just had a lot of good pictures Such today. Yeah, beautiful oh. pictures. Thank you to our viewers for sending yes. all those in. Yes, I mean, when sending those KSAT Connect pictures, love to show them, especially those blue bonnets. Great looking shot there. And look at those blue skies off there in the background. We're not going to have as much in the way of blue skies later on today. Gorgeous view here. We're starting to see the glow of the early morning sunrise. Notice how there's a couple of clouds kind of hanging around here. We'll see a few more of those as the day rolls on, but great start to the day and temperatures will continue to drop down in the next uh, hour, hour and a half or so, right as the sun is coming up or right before that, we're going to be hitting uh, right around 40, low 40s, and then we'll start the warming process and a few of those extra clouds will start to sort of uh, 
fill in a bit more as the morning rolls on 60 by 11 o'clock 63 at noon and then later on this afternoon we're going to be topping off at 71 degrees more of those uh, kind of mid high level clouds so it's not going to be just this this socked in sort of day gray day, but we will have I think more clouds or some of that limited sunshine out there. Partly sunny skies. We do have fire weather watch goes into effect 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock does include San Antonio and up in toward New Braunfels, then go straight up uh, 281 and pretty much all of the area, two thirds of the area except for the northeast and wouldn't be surprised if we have another fire weather watch posted for tomorrow because we're still going to have very dry conditions out there and still breezy. Here's the water vapor imagery. This shows the moisture or in some cases lack thereof in the upper upper levels of the atmosphere and we had some really dry air in place. Now here comes some of that moisture coming in here from the southwest and that's going to help to feed some of those or help out with those mid and high level clouds over the next couple of days. It's going to be chilly again tomorrow morning. We'll be up to a, roughly a normal high temperature. 70s and then we go on in toward the weekend and it's going to be up in the low to mid 80s still going to have low humidity starting off but then by uh, later on Sunday we'll start to see the beginning of the return of the humidity. Here's the uh, computer model. We keep some clouds around today. And then the next few days, nothing but sunshine around here. Uh, notwithstanding the fact that it's dry and high fire danger, we're going to have some gorgeous weather. And then Sunday, that's when, again, late Sunday, the humidity starts to work its way back in here. We're going to have some more clouds on Monday. Tuesday, a small chance for a shower or two. And then going into Wednesday, we do have a chance for some rain. So that's encouraging. It's still a week away, but at least it's encouraging with that chance for some rain. So the forecast today, we have more sunshine this morning. Clouds, some of those mid high clouds continue to fill in throughout the day. 60, 63 degrees at noon and then a high temperature gets up to 71. Partly sunny skies going to have a bit of a breeze out there, so that's what's uh, helping with that fire weather watch to be in effect later on this morning through dinner time. 75 tomorrow, mid 80s by the weekend and more humidity starts to work in here overnight Sunday into Monday, more clouds and hopefully a chance, but not for another week, any chance of rain. I know grass needs it, yep. plants need it. Yep. All right, Mike Osage, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Time now, 651, 45 degrees out. All right, a popular voice is back on the FM airwaves in San Antonio. Tomorrow on GMSA, we'll tell you about Johnny Ramirez's new gig and how a rebranded radio station is spinning Tejano music into a new era. Now let's take a live look out there at the Alamo City. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. 45 degrees, a crisp start and a beautiful sunrise. We'll be right back. All right, morning rush is here, but as I mentioned, no need to rush out the door. We are seeing the commute looking pretty smooth and easy from a lot of these shots at Trans Guide, but be on the lookout. Stalls are the trending problem at this hour. I-10 eastbound at Foster Road is the latest one, but we are seeing a slight slowdown here in the eastbound lanes of 410 at Callahan Road, where a second stall was picked up. Wider look at the map doesn't really show a whole lot of problems out there right now. We did have some isolated issues off of 410 and 935. Those have thankfully cleared out. Just remember to buckle up, drive safe. One last look at Trans Guide as we get a look. Things are moving 410 at WW White. Let's over, head over to Mike. Good looking sunrise this morning. The glow of the, uh, the sunrise is going to be coming up in about uh, 45 minutes or so. Notice a few high wispy clouds out there. We do have somewhat of a wind chill 42 right now. 31 is what it feels like up there in Kerrville. Fire weather watch goes into effect at 11 o'clock up until 7 for the majority of the area and a very high fire danger. Of course, 63 at noon, 71 for a high temperature today with a bit of a uh, gust and then plenty of sunshine the next few days we get up into the mid 80s low humidity then the humidity returns starting off next week thank you mike thank you mike thank you steven thank you sarah we're going to take a break we'll see you back here 9 a.m see you at nine